Do you know the Centurion was the first person who invented the first thermometer in the world? The more modern thermometer was invented by Daniel Fahrenheit in 1704. It was an enclosed glass tube that had a new breaker scale, which is known as Fahrenheit scale. The early version of the thermometer contains alcohol, and in 1714, Fahrenheit was developed mercury thermometer with the same skill. Are you curious how a thermometer works and how to calibrate a thermometer? Today, I will tell you all the answer. Come, join my lesson now. Hi students, I'm Mr. Pei, your Form 4 Physics tutor today. Today we are going to new chapter, chapter 4, heat, and the subtopic for today will be section 4.1, thermal equilibrium. Let's see what is the learning outcome for subtopic today. First, you need to know how to explain the example of thermal equilibrium in your daily life and you have to know the concept of calibration of a liquid in glass thermometer by using two fixed points. Before we are going to discuss what is the definition of thermal equilibrium, let us see what is the difference between heat and temperature. Heat can be defined as a type of energy, while the temperature is a measurement of a degree of hotness of an object. The unit used for heat is Joule, while for temperature, the SI unit for temperature is Kelvin, but degree Celsius is widely used in our daily application. Heat is one of the derived quantity while temperature is a base quantity. We are using geometer to measure heat while we are using thermometer to measure temperature. Now let us discuss what is thermal contact. In picture number one, you may see that two objects is not touching to each other so that there will be no heat transfer between two objects via conduction. While for picture number two, you may see that the two objects are in thermal contact and the heat transfer can be occur between them via conduction. When two objects with different degree of hotness come into thermal contact, the heat energy is transferred between the two objects. And normally, the heat will be transferred from hotter object to colder object. Let us discuss the mechanism of the thermal equilibrium. From the picture, you may see that the object P is hotter which is in 100 degrees Celsius while Q object will be colder and in 0 degrees Celsius. Energy is transferred at faster rate from the hotter object to the colder object. On the other hand, the energy is also transferred from the colder object to the hotter object but in a slower rate. So there is a net flow of energy from the hotter object to the colder object. From the second picture, you may see that the object P, which is hotter object, is cooled down 
from temperature of 100 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, while the colder object which is warmed up from 0 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. And now the temperature of object P and Q becomes same. Why? This because after some time, energy is transferred at the same rate between two objects. Therefore, there is no net heat transfer between object P and Q. And object P and Q is said to be in thermal equilibrium. So now we can conclude that thermal equilibrium is achieved when there is no net heat flow transfer between two objects. Second, both objects have the same temperature. So now, let us discuss what is the example of thermal equilibrium in our daily life. First, a weight tower is placed on the forehead of a person who has high fever. Initially, the temperature of cloth is lower than the temperature of the person. Therefore, the heat transfer will be occur from the forehead which is hotter to the tower which is a colder object until the thermal equilibrium is reached. The tower is then rinsed with bad water and the procedure is repeated. In this way, the heat energy is removed from the person so that the temperature of the sick person will be decreased. Thermal equilibrium concept is also applied in cooling drinks. A hot drink can be colder by adding a few ice cubes to the drink. Heat from the whole object is transferred to the colder ice until the thermal equilibrium between the ice and water is reached. Therefore, the hot drink temperature will be dropped while the ice temperature will be increased and melt. The final temperature of drinks will be equal to the final temperature of ice which is in thermal equilibrium condition. We have finished the first learning outcome which is about the application of thermal equilibrium in our daily life. Now we are going to the second part of the learning outcome of today's subtopic which is the calibration of liquid in glass thermometer with two fixed points. So this an uh, example of clinical thermometer and normally the liquid in glass thermometer we will use will be alcohol and mercury. From the table you may see that both of the liquid have a wider range of freezing point and boiling point. The alcohol given a lower freezing point while the mercury has a higher boiling point. So what is the characteristic of the liquid used in liquid in glass thermometer? First, the liquid must be easily seen, expand and contract rapidly over a wide range of temperature. Expand uniformly when heated and not stick to the glass wall of the capillary tube. How a liquid in glass thermometer works? It is actually using principle of expansion and contraction of liquid when the temperature increases and decreases. Flume expansion and contraction occur in the 
capillary tube. So that means that the length of the column will be increased when temperature of the object increase and the length of the column will be decreased when an object temperature is low. Therefore, the length of capillary column indicates the changes in the temperature of a body. Now let us discuss how can a thermometer be calibrated. A temperature scale is obtained by choosing two temperature and we call that fixed point. So there is a two fixed point which is known as ice point and steam point. From the table you may see that the first fixed point is a lower fixed point and we know as freezing point and it is defined as a temperature of pure melting ice with value 0 degree Celsius while steam point is the upper fixed point which is known as boiling point it is defined as the temperature of steam from water that is boiling at atmospheric pressure which has a 100 degree Celsius now let us see how we can get the two fixed point first to get ice point, we need to place the thermometer in a funnel filled with the pure ice that is melt. Wait until the mercury column stops falling and mark the mercury level as a freezing point, which is 0 degrees Celsius. Second, how to define steam point? First, we need to place the thermometer in the steam path above the boiling water and then wait until the mercury column stop rising and mark the mercury level as boiling point which is 100 degrees celsius step 3 divide the distance between two fixed points which is ice point and steam point into 100 equal division that means that each division is measure a temperature about 1 degree Celsius. Therefore, we can using this formula to define or to determine the temperature of an object to be measured. T is the temperature of liquid or an object which we are going to measure. L theta is the length of capillary tube at the object we want to measure. L naught is the length of capillary tube at the ice point. Now, let us discuss how we apply the formula to determine the temperature in a room. In an activity to calibrate a mercury in glass thermometer, the following result were obtained. The length of mercury column in 0 degrees Celsius is 2 cm, while in 100 degrees Celsius is 14 cm. When a thermometer is placed in a room, the length of the mercury column is about 7 cm. What is the temperature in the room? Let's see the solution. Firstly, this is the formula we learned just now. From the question, we know that the T will be the temperature in the room going to determine. And the L theta is the length of the column in room temperature, which is 7 cm. And L0 is the length of mercury column in 0 degrees Celsius. And L100 is the length of mercury column in 100 degrees Celsius, which is 14 cm. 
So we substitute all the value in the formula and we get the temperature in the room will be 41.7 degrees Celsius. Now we have reached the end of the subtopic today. We are going to discuss how to increase the sensitivity of a mercury thermometer. There is three ways to increase the sensitivity of the thermometer. First, we have to using narrow capillary tube to increase in volume of mercury is higher, which means that when the changes of temperature increase, the narrow capillary tube able to give a significant changes in the length of column of mercury thermometer. Consequently, will increase the sensitivity of mercury thermometer. Second, we have to use a glass bar with thinner wall to increase the heat transfer rate to liquid. And the last, we have to using a small bar to increase the absorption of heat faster. This is a structure of mercury thermometer which is not related to increasing its sensitivity but it is to improve the structure of mercury thermometer. First, we have to use round and thick stem because round and thick stem is more stronger and not easily broken for the thermometer. Second, we have to using a glass box stand so that the level of liquid can be seen clearly. And here, the liquid we have to choose will be mercury and colored alcohol. First, this is because both are good heat conductor and they are of fact can be seen clearly. They have high boiling point and able to expand and contract uniformly when heated, not stick to the glass wall of the capillary tube. I hope that my lessons today can help you more understand the concept of thermal equilibrium. Thank you for watching. See you next time.